Hey guys, how's it going? Twigs here. So we're going to be checking out some of the highlights from the uh, 3.3 special program. Uh, we're going to be watching the trailer for the 3.3 special program, and then I'm going to look at highlights from the program. Because I already recorded this video, and then I realized my audio levels were completely off whenever I uh, <laughs> finished recording. So we're just going to try to look at the highlights, and I feel like that might be a little bit better because... That way I'm not just covering everything and just regurgitating it back toward you guys. So, with all that being said, hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel, helps out uh, growing a community over here. And by subscribing, you're subscribing to more gaming content like this. And also hit that notification bell so you'll be informed whenever I go live or upload any new content. So let's jump into it. A friendly word of advice. Okay. Test of courage events tend to give rise to a variety of strange rumors and stories. So please, be sure to exercise caution. Ah! Oh shit, our tummy. Ah, how was that? Were you scared? <laughs> so we got Inazuma stuff going on. Who goes there? We got a haunted so forest thing. So is there theme. really a ghost around here? Why does Simon have a feeling that it's staring right at us? Are you? Got a ghost lady that that's that's fitting for a haunted forest. Jester, I completed the task you gave me. From this day forth, Balladeer and Kabuki Mono will cease to exist. Is it like an omen cell tree? Did you really What's think you would be able to see through my plan? The Tori. The <laughs> Tore. In that case, I'll take some time for myself now. Sick beat. Squawn Fury. You dare to gaze upon me? Annihilated this pyro. Ah, oh, Harm is on now. Scared enough with me. Too late for regret. Have fun with this gift. I like her design. Her design looks really nice. Scott. The mere fact of your utility does not make you indestructible. Sick poster. Pretty sick poster. And so then, yeah, we got this event, the Akitsu Komodashi event, which is the event that we're going to be getting the crown of inside, the primo gems, a new sword. Uh, but it's mostly looking like um, like a Pong game with like Tetris elements with elemental reactions. Um, it might be fun to just kind of fool around with, but I feel like this Akitsu Komodachi, the Haunted Forest Test of Courage event is mostly going to just be mini-games. There is a one. Oh, Misty Dungeon. Yes, 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 yes. This is going to be a returning event, except this time the event takes place inside, um, inside the, the desert. Uh, ruins in the, the Sumeru Desert. When Trace is making its return, there will be a slight twist to the gameplay. It's still hide and seek, but as you saw, he, the hunter is able to shoot out this little thing that will test and see if it's a dummy or not. And then also the uh, runner will, if a runner's caught, they can still affect the game. They're just not spectating anymore. They can. They're still out of the game, but they can place these dummies to kind of throw off the hunter to help out any of the remaining teammates that might still be in the game. And then we have the Genius Invocation. Uh, the, it looks like they did put a lot of effort into this game mode. Uh, it's kind of like a cross between um, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon, Pokemon TCG where the characters are able to do things 
based on the amount of elements that they're on the that you have rolled the dice. That instead of like elemental cards, it's dice, and that there also is equipment cards and all this stuff similar to Yu-Gi-Oh. And it's PVE. You can go around playing other players, uh, well, other NPCs. But there also is PVP where you can match make with other people. From what they said, there is no rankings. It's completely like you match make with just a random ass other person, and then you just play the game just like you would with an NPC. Only it's you and another player. So honestly, it looked pretty good. Um, it looks like it the, the TCG game will probably be fun and then this is another big thing we have two new artifact sets one is obviously meant to be placed on um, with the wanderer aka Scaramouche being the desert pavilion two piece gives a uh, 15% animo damage and then the four piece gives um, when charge attacks hit an opponent the equipping character's normal attack speed will increase by 10% while normal charged and plunging attacks will increase by 40% for 15 seconds. So, obviously, like I said, meant to be placed on Scaramouche, aka the Wanderer, but there is another character could potentially benefit from it, which would be Hyzo. All you have to do is start your attacks with a charged attack, and then bam, for the rest of the time, for the rest of 15 seconds, you get that attack increase speed and uh, 40% attack, uh, normal attack, charge attack, launching attack damage. So pretty good. And then the Flower of Paradise Lost looks really good. Um, increases Elemental Mastery by 80 points. Uh, your standard Elemental Mastery buff for a two-piece set. And then for the four-piece, the equipping characters Bloom, Hyper Bloom, and Burge and Reaction damage are increased by 40%. Additionally, after the equipping characters triggers Bloom, Hyper Bloom, or Burgeon, they will gain another 25% bonus to the effect mentioned prior. Each stack of this lasts for 10 seconds, max 4 stacks simultaneously. This effect can only be triggered once per second, and this effect will trigger even if the character is not on the field. A very interesting artifact set. Um, characters like uh, D. Luke, Kaching. And maybe, maybe Nilu would uh, potentially benefit from this. It would be definitely worth testing to see if this artifact set would be a slight upgrade compared to the uh, uh, Electro set and the uh, Witches set that you normally put on, like, let's say, like the Electro set you normally put on Kaching and the which set is normally play, put on a uh, dealer. Mm -hmm. So it would definitely be an uh, artifact set that would be worth testing out if you're trying to do like Burgeon with D. Luke or Hyper Bloom with Kaching. Uh, pretty good artifact set in my opinion. And then what else do we have? But I, I am pleased with these notable artifacts. And then yes, there's the new weapons. This sword is the part of the uh, is a, is the free sword for the event. And then this is going to be the uh, new five-star weapon. It's going to be on the event weapon banner that's uh, meant to be used with Scaramouche. Windblade. So now not we're going to be looking at the some, Traveler's uh, gameplay. <laughs> okay, okay. So as everyone probably already noticed, the Wanderer can hover in the air when he casts his elemental skill. Upon using his elemental skill, he will first deal AOE damage before leaping into the air and entering a hovering state. So while hovering, the Wanderer's normal and charge attacks will be converted into Kugo, Fushudan, and Kugu Tofukai respectively. The damage they deal and their AoE will be increased. Their damage will be considered normal and charge attack damage, respectively. Also, Kugu Tofukai will not consume stamina. So basically what he's saying here is that, um, just to give you a quick overview, Skaramouche is a catalyst character who, when he's attacking, will shoot these wind blades out of his hands while he's uh, swinging them and they'll do animo damage and he's also a character that can hover as you can see the little green meter on the side basically anytime Scaramouche does anything in the air that is he's going to be consuming uh, points as they refer to him as from that meter so when you're doing auto attacks you're consuming points when you're hovering, the longer you stay hovered, you're going to be consuming those points. 
and eventually after you use so many of those points bam you fall to the ground and you gotta wait for your skill to reset so the thing is also is that he's also a character that can gain bonuses based on the amount based on the elements i should say that he swirls he does get bonuses when he swirls reactions one reaction is that if he swirls it, he will get uh, more points that he can use when he's uh, floating. Another uh, bonus he can get when he swirls another different reaction allow him to gain energy from, while he's in his skill uh, state. Next character we're going to look at is Faruzan. Faruzan is a character who is trying to basically create vacuums. As you saw when she uh, pulled her, she pops her skill, and after she pops her skill, she can shoot an arrow, and that arrow will create a little vacuum. Same thing goes for her ult, only her ult works in like a triangle. Then when she pops her ult, she creates this little device, and the device will start in one spot, cause a vacuum, then go to a different spot, cause a vacuum, go to a different spot, cause a vacuum, and then go back to where it started, and then repeats the process. The only issue I see with that is that, as you will see later on in the gameplay, as you can see right here, you can see the vacuum going, and then, as you can see, it's nowhere near the enemies. And so that's the issue I see with the ult, is that when it, there's a possibility that, yes, it'll start in one spot, do the vacuum, but then when it goes to do its two other spots, like I said, it goes in a triangle, it won't hit them and so yeah there might be a buff that you get while that thing's active but the other part of the time the vacuum is not doing anything <laughs> other than if the enemies happen to be the in that one spot in the triangle where it's going to be doing its vacuum effect so i know there's probably more i don't we don't know about these characters going for the wanderer and um um, Faruzan. I'm pretty sure there's still more to learn about these characters, but based on first impressions from this 3.3 special program, I am impressed with the Wanderer, aka Skyrimush. I think he's probably going to be a really interesting character. I think he's probably going to be really fun to play. Faruzan, on the other hand, even though I'm, I actually really like the character's backstory and I really do like the character's design. I feel like Farazan's gameplay is either going to be lackluster or very niche. Kind of like our four stars we've been getting for the last borderline year and a half. But now we're going to get into the banners. First phase is going to be Wanderer and Arataki Ito with Farazan as the four star that's the new four star that's going to be on both these banners. So if you want Farazan, bam, you're going to be getting her on the new 5-star banner along with Arataki Ito's banner. So, pretty cool. Two new characters right in Phase 1. So, Phase 2, we're going to be getting Raiden Shogun and Kamisato Ayato. This is a big one. Kamisato Ayato is a, is a good character. I like Kamisato Ayato, but the character that should intrigue you <laughs> is Raiden Shogun. Raiden Shogun is a super powerful character. She's a Archon. She is a great battery, great sub DPS, and I could not say enough good things about Raiden Shogun. If you do not have Raiden Shogun, I would highly, highly recommend wishing on Raiden Shogun. This that is Raiden Shogun is a character that will not disappoint you. She fits in several several teams due to the fact that she is an amazing battery and an amazing sub DPS. So again, if you do not have Raiden Shogun, that is the character to go for. So with that being said, my my uh, concluding thoughts on the 3.3 uh, news special program, whatever you want to call it. Is I am intrigued to see where um, we're going to be going with the Scaramouche story. We see that it's going to have elements of Detore in it. 
we see that um, it's going to be looking into what is the basically how Scaramouche goes from how we saw him at the end of the Ark Conquest for Sumeru to now this kind of anti-hero who's becoming the Wanderer. And we also know that in this story we're going to be learning other things involving Ermensaw. And I, I think that's going to be possibly revealing because it might reveal more stuff about Tavat and the Traveler. So I am looking forward to that story. I think that's going to be really interesting to play and check out. The rest of the uh, update looks like it's going to be filler. <laughs> yeah, the, the rest of this update is probably going to be feeling like filler. The Inazuma event honestly looks like just your typical filler content. It looks like it's not going to be pertinent toward anything. It looks like just a mini game event that takes place in Inazuma. I'm not too interested. The Misty Dungeon does look fun. The Wind Trace is always fun. And the TCG does look good. I think they did put a lot of um, game uh, game development into it. I think they put a, a lot of time into it. And I think it possibly might be really good. I'm going to be looking forward to playing the TCG. My only concern is if maybe in six months to a year, <laughs> the Hoyoverse and Genshin Impact forget about it. This is one of those things where... What makes TCG games really good, like Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon and um, games like that, is that they are constantly being updated with new cards because new cards evolve the gameplay. New cards adds new ways to play the game, just like in any other video game like Genshin Impact. New characters always change up the gameplay. Same thing with TCG games. New cards change up the gameplay, so... This is one of those things where if they want people playing the TCG, you got to update and add new cards over time to make things interesting and fun. Keep it interesting and fun. So hopefully they do keep regular updates with the TCG. That way people can stay into it. Um, honest, But my overall thoughts, 3.3... Interesting story with the Wanderer and Ermansaw, but the rest of it looks like filler. So that's my thoughts. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching this. Hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Now catch you guys later.